In the ever-expanding car market, we are actually starting to see more of an ever-shrinking car market. And over and over again, we are seeing brands that were at one time juggernauts, brands like Jaguar, starting to shrink and really have a lot of questions about whether they are going to be in the U.S. market for a while or even for next year. We have no idea. So I'm going to be going over a couple of those today. And my first one is going to be Buick. Now, in my past videos, I have ragged on Buick a little bit. Um, they're sort of a your grandma's car, um, kind of a forget forgetful car almost. People sort of forget that Buick still even makes cars in uh, America today. They only sell like three or four cars. They're all SUVs or crossover hybrid weird cars. They all have really confusing naming and I don't know, it's just a mess. Buick is only still selling in the US or still selling their cars here, not that anyone's buying them, but people are they are still selling uh, Buicks in America because of how good they are doing in China. And China apparently adores the Buick. It is a completely different company over there. They have like a sedan, they have a minivan, they have it's crazy. <laughs> China Buick is insane. Um, and they do very well over there. Buick is the premier car company in China, and it is very much the opposite in America. And we really are starting to question whether or not Buick will stay in the U.S. market. Now, Buick is a very nostalgic American, Americana name brand, sort of like Chrysler. Uh, do I think they're going to stay here in America for much longer? I don't really know. Their sale numbers have been declining sharply for a while now and I think that it's just a matter of time before we see Buick finally die in America. And that brings me to my second, speaking of dying in America, it is going to be Maserati. Now I understand that Maserati is a luxury performance sports car brand, kinda. They sell very, very cool cars. They sell very, very fast sedans, uh, very cool SUV uh, crossover things, but it's not working. Americans don't want to buy Maserati because one, they are expensive. Two, they massively depreciate in value. I saw there, are, we've all seen the memes of the guy taking the Maserati out from the dealership. Uh, the second it hits that concrete, it is, you lose $40,000 on it. And that, I mean, that really is the truth. These things plummet in their price. And that's because they're pretty horrible quality cars, not interior wise, but engine wise. Maserati engines forever have had problems. We've all seen, again, we've all seen the memes of Maseratis breaking a second they leave the dealership. Um, you don't want to touch used Maserati with a 10 and a half foot pole, to put it honest. And yeah, Maserati has tried so much. They've tried everything to stay in America and it's just not working. The experiment isn't working. I personally like Maserati. I think they do have compelling vehicles for the enthusiast. But for the everyday person, why would you buy a Maserati when you could buy, I don't know, a Mercedes, a BMW? What makes you go with Maserati when you could buy a BMW and the BMW would be more reliable and it would not depreciate so much in value? Why do that? So Maserati, I think, is going to leave the US market within the next five years. And of course, they'll probably try to re-enter in eight years, you know, how this always goes. Um, there's like what Fiat did, and Alpha. Speaking of Alpha, that is the next company on my list. And Alfa Romeo, man, they have no swag. <laughs> Alfa Romeo has no swag, and I like some of the Alphas. I think the Giulia Quadrifoglio is a freaking sick car. I'd love to have one, uh, but man, Nobody wants one. We've all heard the Alfa Romeo horror stories, uh, but that's more of the late 90s, early 2000s models. Nowadays, Alfa Romeos are pretty reliable uh, as far as purchasing the new car goes. Uh, I've heard they have a lot of electrical issues, but that's with any Stellantis car, you're gonna get electrical issues. Um, 
But the first problem with Alfred Romeo is that they have no hype. Nobody's saying, damn, I can't wait to get my hands on the brand new, uh, the Tonali, the Alfred Romeo Tonali. I cannot wait to get my hands on that. Nobody's saying that. Um, they also do not have a compelling crossover uh, or SUV. They do have them, but nobody wants one because they're overpriced versions of things that already exist, like the Tonali, for example, which I just mentioned, is a hybrid. People love hybrids. Hybrids are flying off the shelves, but it's a suckier version of the Dodge Hornet. It literally is a fancier Dodge Hornet, and nobody wants to pay the upcharge for it. People already don't want the Dodge Hornet and add a ton of extra money on top. Why? There's no performance gain. I'm going to be honest. The insides of Alfa Romeos aren't even that impressive. It's just, why would you buy that when you could buy a Dodge Hornet? Or... When you, why buy a Dodge Hornet when you buy anything else? Um, and they have had the same design for like a decade now. And I know I'm going to sound like a hypocrite here. Uh, people saying, you know, you complain all the time about Dodge getting rid of the Challenger and Charger. They had the same design for a decade and a half. Well, it doesn't matter because people liked that and bought it. People already don't buy these Alfa Romeos as they look, okay? And Alfa Romeo, man, they just, they can't catch a break. Nobody wants their cars. Um, I do think they are gonna leave the US market again. Um, I would give it five years too, for Alfa to finally leave, throw in their hat and say, we're gonna stick to Europe, where I hear they actually do quite well. Uh, they sell diesel variants in Europe and people like them. Um, yeah, they like Alfa Romeo over there, not here. I give them five years. Uh, maybe redesign your brand, fix the electrical issues. Um, but yeah, it's just, there is some tarnished reputation on the Alfa Romeo name. Speaking of tarnished reputation, we have Jaguar. And <sighs> Jaguar is a very confusing company for me because they do make very cool cars. Um, they have very cool coupes. Uh, V8 coupes, they're very cool. V6 coupes, I like them. But man, you don't see a lot of these things. And that's not because they're more expensive than anything else. I truly believe their reputation is so horrible that nobody wants one. And Jags, man, I mean, they're English, so they have problems. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, you don't see them on the road, but if you drive by an auto shop, you're going to see one. That's If you want to see a Jaguar, you'll see it in the auto shop. Uh, these things are a mess. Uh, the company's a mess, too. Um, they're owned by Tata Motors, a Indian company that also owns Land Rover, and which Land Rover is another whole mess, uh, but we're going to stick with Jaguar for right now. I have seen that Jaguar is going to ditch every single car they have and go towards a more Rolls Royce or Bentley style of thing where they sell one car, one expensive luxury, the pinnacle luxury car, and they're going to sell that. I don't think that's a very good idea because you just get a fancier Jaguar that's just as unreliable doesn't matter um and of course that probably would mean they're gonna be saying you know jaguars are making this much money rolls royce probably doesn't even make that much money let's just not put as much money into this so that we can sort of offset that deficit um jaguar man they are a mess uh i think they're cool again like i've said i was just at a car show recently and some guy was talking about how he wants to see a, a jaguar there i don't remember i wasn't really listening but i heard it i remember raising my eyebrows i'm like i've never ever heard that at a car show um yeah jaguar jaguar's a mess they need help uh again the magical number here you know what no i wouldn't even say five years i bet they leave within the next two years because they've been on that sharp decline for a while I give Jaguar two years in America, two more years, and then I think they're going to be done for a while. And for a bonus here, I'm going to go with Mini Cooper. 
Mini Cooper is is a weird brand. Uh, Mini Cooper used to have a lot of clout in the car community when it first came out because they were these retro sort of style hot hatches that were almost endlessly customizable. Uh, you could get them in all sorts of colors. Their engines were pretty easily tunable. Um, and they actually sound pretty decent. Like I've heard a couple exhaust setups on them, they sound okay. Um, but man, they have, just like Alpha, no sauce. Um, they have tried everything. I, I haven't seen a new Mini Cooper in a long time. I mean, they've tried everything with Mini Cooper. They've tried hybrids, they've tried to bring out full-size SUVs that just look goofy for one. Nobody wants them. They've tried electric cars, which sold all right. Nobody really wants it though. There's not really much else to do with Mini because they are a brand that banked off of nostalgia. And the problem with that is you're gonna run into the issue of, wait, now that the nostalgia's gone, why do I really want this? Um, why buy a Mini Cooper when you could buy a Honda Civic? It's the same exact thing. One actually looks better and is more tunable. Um, and it's gonna last longer. Uh, Mini Cooper, I have a friend at work, her Mini Cooper. Uh, she used to drive it to work every single day and I haven't seen it in like two and a half months because she said, oh, it's been in the shop the whole time. So I'm like, yikes. Um, I don't really, I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know much about Mini Cooper, uh, but I have seen the sales numbers and it's bad. Uh, Mini Cooper is on the outs. BMW, I, I think BMW is gonna pull them out of the US market very soon. Um, I think they're losing money, honestly. I bet they're probably losing money making these Mini Coopers. Uh, of course, like I said, that electric version did make a little bit of money. I have actually seen those out and about. Um, but again, it's kind of like Fiat. Fiat and Mini Cooper, I think, are in the same boat. And they have no excitement around their brand. Nobody is going out and saying, let me go buy the new Mini Cooper. Let me go buy the new Fiat, you know? So I think these guys have the same exact problem, uh, Fiat and Mini. Mini is very close to being over. Uh, I think it was a good run. It was a good experiment. Formed some cool cars, but... Yeah, I think really think uh, Mini is done. Mini is pretty done. Um, and again, they're just not cool. Maybe they used to be cool, but there's no excitement around it anymore. And that excitement is really what pays the bills. Uh, so yeah, these are the brands that I think are gonna die very soon. Uh, a little bit, others more than the others, uh, might say. Okay, Maserati. I think Maserati and Jaguar are gonna be the first entities group uh, to sort of dip out. Uh, Maserati's in really bad shape, like, and Jaguar. Jaguar and Maserati are in shockingly bad shape. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. These are the brands that I think are donezo. They're, they're out of here. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to see more videos in this format, let me know.